We're live. Hello, hello, everybody. I have wrestled up a very special <laughs> guest for everybody because who better to tell women what helps a man open up to us than a man? <laughs> <laughs> then a man and my husband Benjamin is such a wonderful wonderful inspiration for me and um yeah I think he will be for you too Benjamin joins me every Sunday we do a uh live with Lisa and Benjamin it's called getting inside the right male mind mm -hmm. <laughs> And I probe this man's mind for all the beautiful information I can possibly pull out of it. So you can hear the two of us talk every Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. We talk for about an hour, mm -hmm. half an hour to an hour. Uh -huh. About an hour. Yeah, usually. Yeah. We try to sometimes do a half an hour, but it goes over. Um, but Yes, so Benjamin is here tonight, and we are going to talk about the three or three things that really help a man open up to a woman. Hi, everybody. Good to see you all. So, yes, we we decided also to do a little. I, I decided to do a little later time because it's uh, summer, and I thought that it would give more people an opportunity to be able to jump on. So, honey. Mm -hmm. Honey, let's talk about <laughs> what those three things are that help a man open up to a woman. Let's say we're on a first date and I really want you to open up. You know, I want to get to know you and I don't just want to have a standard conversation with you. I, I really want to get some depth. Mm -hmm. what, what helps a man open up? Well, we know what doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're sitting across from a man in a Starbucks, he's not going to open up unless the woman begins to show some vulnerability herself. And vulnerability should be in the context of trust and safety. And so, you know, if you offer something vulnerable about yourself and then you see how it's received, um, and uh, and reciprocated. Mm -hmm. So like what? Let's say I'm on a date and I'm trying to open up or I want, you know, what would be something vulnerable that I would share on a date that would help you open up? Well, it might be something in the moment, like, you know, I've, I'm, I've been really excited and I've been nervous about this date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Or, you know, I, I couldn't get my hair right. <laughs> you know, something that is vulnerable, that may be in the moment, and uh, may even be humorous. I couldn't get my hair right. What? So like what? Like, like, like get, not getting my hair right? <laughs> uh-huh. So vulnerability, is what you're saying is vulnerability would be like just sharing something real something yeah. something like i was really nervous or mm. i was one worrying about what to what we would talk about tonight uh, or i changed my blouse you know four times to get the right look that yeah. would create an image in a guy's mind yes. <laughs> <laughs> i changed my blouse four <laughs> times to get this right uh-huh that would that would certainly light a guy up mm. And how would you respond? Like if I went on a date and I said to you, gosh, you know, I was so nervous. I didn't, I, I, I changed my blouse five times before I got the right, you know, the I right say, look. I'm so glad you said that because I changed my shirt three times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that would be a total of eight times that we changed. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So how would that open up a, a deeper cut, like get you to open up? Well, first it creates a little humor, mm -hmm. a little vulnerability, mm -hmm. uh, something that is in the present moment. And most important, it's not um, an interview. You know, we, we want to avoid interviewing a man, mm -hmm. you know, that 
that you're not asking questions, but showing vulnerability, seeing how it's received and reciprocated, it begins a conversation rather than an interview. And that's so important. But I get it. But, you know, here I am and I'm a woman and my dating's not going well. And I'm really, um, yeah, I mean, I'm stuck and I can't really make a, a connection with guys. And I do resort to those questions because... There's so much tension. There's so many nerves in the air. Mm. So how would I get vulnerable? Like if you were getting vulnerable with a woman on a date, what, how would you do that? Other than saying I changed my blouse five times before my shirt. Well, I think sharing that, that there might be some nervous nervousness, some anxiety, uh, mm -hmm. some anticipation is a really good one. Mm -hmm. That's very inviting. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in, anticipating this evening for days now. I'm so happy to meet you mm -hmm. and, and you see how that's reciprocated. It could start very, very light, even superficial. And then as the gentleman receives and reciprocates, and then you receive and reciprocate, you can choose to get deeper and deeper and deeper. So I think one of the mistakes that a lot of women make is that we assume that getting vulnerable or being emotionally naked means that we have to kind of put it all out there. Like we're going to tell you all about our stuff, right? Like we're going to tell you vulnerable, like, you know, I think you're talking about subtle things. Mm -hmm. You're talking about subtle things. Yes that are in the moment. You're not talking about um, sitting there going, God, you know, I really messed up my marriage and my husband, my ex-husband hates me. <laughs> my kids don't speak to me. That Not that kind of vulnerability. If you can picture an old fashioned window shade. Mm -hmm. And so you let it out a little bit and you see what comes back and then you could, it's safe to let it out a little bit more and you wait and see the response and you let it out. And, and it's all with the foundation of trust and safety. Mm -hmm. But it's, and I think people really want specifics. They want to know, you know, not, not broad terms, but very specific. Like we're on a date and mm -hmm. I come in and I say to you, God, you know, I was so nervous. You know, we had mm -hmm. such great communication mm -hmm. and, I realized as I was driving over here that I started to get butterflies uh -huh. and I was, you know, I started to think, gosh, well, what, you know, I hope it's as good, you know, we can keep up that connection. I hope it's as good as it was, you know, over text. Uh -huh. Right. And what would you say? I would say, wow, you know, we had great communication. I really, you know, was looking forward to meeting you. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I, I get a little nervous myself. Mm -hmm. yeah? And I'm kind of glad you shared that because it makes me feel more comfortable. Oh, wow. So yeah. you got ner You were feeling a little nervous, too. That's yeah. why. That's really. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's weird to go on dates. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. And it's so refreshing <laughs> that, you know to be sitting here with you and having a real conversation rather than being interviewed. <laughs> really? Because I had my list right here and I was going to just ask you like, how many siblings do you have and are you close to them? Do I own or rent? <laughs> <laughs> right. And how much, uh, how, which car out there was yours? <laughs> right. Right. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, I just looked up your FICO score. <laughs> <laughs> looks like we're not going to be getting the most expensive thing on the menu. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. So like, so, so it would create openness and it would start to create some humor just to start. And what I'm really hearing is how refreshing it would be to walk in and start with, some, like really start a date off that way. Start a date off with, gosh, I was looking forward to this and I found that I was feeling very nervous. Oh, it was like our first date mm -hmm. where I was late. I got lost and I'm never late. Right. Ever. For anything. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll get you a place early and just circle the block. Or... Did you come or were you born early? <laughs> Did you come a few months early, honey? I must never... have. You must, I must have. <laughs> uh huh. And, um, you know, I, I finally got a hold of you. Cell reception wasn't great almost 20 years ago. And it, the call kept dropping. I, I was just thinking if, if anything ever becomes of the state, it would be a, a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I probably used a couple of adjectives before the word miracle. And when I reached you by, you know, at the restaurant, when I, they, I said, is there a woman who's been sitting by herself for the last half hour? Um, and they said, yes. And I said, could I speak to her? <laughs> and you just said, uh, I said, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm, I got lost. I kept heading in the wrong direction. There's a five-way intersection. I kept missing the street. And I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you said, don't worry. I've, I've just, I've been sitting here enjoying myself. And that just like, just settled me down completely. So by the time I screeched to a halt in front of the restaurant <laughs> and I came in and <laughs> with my best James Bond, no, <laughs> you know, I, I was already at ease. You know, I just knew that that there was a sweetness, a compassion, um, you know, a receptivity. Mm -hmm. um, it was lovely. We've been together. I took myself off of uh, the uh, the dating sites and waited for you to get back from your three and a half week business trip, and we've been together ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it was very real. I think also that very real, vulnerable moment for you right? Because being late is, if anybody oh. knows Benjamin, being late is just a cardinal sin to him. It's, yeah. He respects people's time, and it may be the only time I've ever seen him late in our 19 years together. Plus, I was picturing we hadn't met in person, mm -hmm. and that you thought you were being stood up, mm -hmm. which was horrible. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's true. And so you were really concerned yeah. about, you, know, you were worried that you were putting me, that I would be worried. You know, worried or or just feel badly because you were thought you were being stood up right. and you weren't. I was trying to find the restaurant. Aw, yeah. that's really yeah. sweet. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, that set the tone already for a very vulnerable evening and a very real evening already because you were so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You were. You were already, I mean, whether you wanted to be a, or not, you came in in a vulnerable way already having, you know, and I think a lot of women don't realize that there are some very good and kind and thoughtful men who may mess up and they are very conscious about how they might be affecting, you know, if they're yeah. running late or if oh, they yeah. did something, you know, wrong or if they hurt a woman somehow. And that would put you in a very tender place. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Interesting. So another as we're talking, something else that comes uh -huh. up that really can help a man open up. And I know we had discussed some things, but one that came up that I know you'll agree with is playfulness. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's probably at the top of the list, you know, uh, because the playfulness takes away any heaviness, mm -hmm. um, any um, you know, deep expectations. It just is two people playing, like, mm -hmm. like kids, and it could start right off. Right. You know, and and uh, um, there's yeah. an inst humor creates an instant connection mm -hmm. more than interview questions. Yeah, and and that's really, I think, ultimately what people want is playfulness. They're looking for a relationship where they're playing, where there's fun, where there's safety. It requires a certain confidence to be playful, right? Like it, like a self-confidence that yeah. when you're playing, you may say or do the wrong thing, but it requires safety and trust and 
um, yeah, to be able to just be in the moment and say, you know, not second guess yourself and trust that the other person, if they don't, if the joke doesn't land or if you toss them the ball and they don't catch it, that you'll recover and that there will be a fun back and forth and yeah. Right. And humor, mm -hmm. even the least bit of humor washes away anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it creates connection. It creates intimacy. Yeah. Laughter creates intimacy. Yeah, it's really wonderful. So what else, babe? What, what else creates connection? Well, I think when both parties, but when a woman is insatiably curious about the man, mm -hmm. they're just really genuinely curious. So in instead of asking interview questions, um, it's... It's really, he may say something and say, that's fascinating. I, I, I'd love to know more about that. You know, tell me more about your car. <laughs> or, or, you know, tell me more about, you know, what you love about the baseball team or whatever it is, you know, you're an aspect of his job. And, you know, these are things that, that he may not be able to speak about with his male friends. Right. You know, we don't, when men get together, we really aren't insatiably curious. You know, we'll just say, you know, how you doing? You know, <laughs> good, how are you? Yeah. Hungry? Yeah. You know? And so for a man to be able to share something that he really isn't able to share with other women and particularly with mm -hmm. his male friends, that's special. Do you, I really want women to get this because there are things that we offer men that they can't get from other men, that they can only get from us that are really deeply gratifying to them, to have a beautiful woman, a woman that they find attractive, sit across from them on a date. And that woman is wildly curious yeah. about him, right? Yeah. Like what a freaking turn on that would be. I, 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 you're blowing my mind right now because I never really thought about that. But if you think about that's like, a, that is an elixir. That is an elixir to a man to have a gorgeous woman who he's totally turned on by. And if you really want to turn that man on, sit across from him and probe his mind, get curious about the things, you know, one of the things, look, some people are just not self-aware. There, Some men go on dates and they're so nervous, they're so anxious, or they're just, some men are just self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, when you're on a date, you, you know, don't just discard a man so quickly who doesn't ask questions or who's talking a lot about himself. Because in the very beginning, <clears throat> you know, men are, some men are so excited just to sit across from somebody and actually be able to talk. Right. And as far as asking questions, a lot of men, it's almost like they're waiting for pieces of the puzzle, mm -hmm. you know, and each little bit of information puts a piece down on the puzzle in its right place until you have a picture. And so a lot of men don't ask questions like a woman would. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll sit back and hear stories, get inferences, get, I, you know, ideas of the person. And it begins to create a picture and it begins to create answers. Mm -hmm. But we often don't ask the direct questions. Well, and men don't sit there and ask questions of each other. Yeah. Like they, they, a lot of men feel it's, it's prying. They feel like it's intrusive. And they know that if a man wants to tell them something, he'll, he'll say it. You, you know, they won't have to ask. Men will ask, you know, they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. And if they want your opinion, they'll ask your opinion, right? Yeah. But the the reason I was sharing this was because women, I think, often miss an, a, a golden opportunity on a date to sit across from a man and just get curious. And, you know, I would urge women, whether or not this is your guy, whether or not you think the guy sitting across from you is self-absorbed, we want a man to take an interest in us. And a lot of times 
we can be very self-focused. Mm. You know, we're not, we expect a man to buy us dinner and we want him to, you know, do all these things. And then he's got to take an interest in us. When I dated, my idea was, you know, that I was on a date and a man would have the pleasure of my company. And if he was going to treat me to dinner, I wanted to be the best dinner guest I could possibly be, mm -hmm. right? Like that was nice. my goal, was to be the best dinner guest, especially because I was being treated to dinner. And I, in the past, hadn't had men be very generous with me. And so, especially like my ex-husband and men that I had been with, I had been more financially stable than they were. And so... Um, to have men, to have the internet, which I felt was a golden opportunity, and to be able to go out with a lot of men and have men treat me to dinner, my goal, whether or not this was somebody I ever wanted to see again, I was really there to practice connecting. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to practice getting men to open up to me, to really get inside their minds. And what you're saying, is so beautiful because I hear so many women come back from dates, my clients who are in my 12 week emotionally naked dating course, and they will say, God, you know, all he did was talk about himself. He didn't ask me a question about myself. It was so boring, whatever. And I didn't have that experience. Well, the, the women that feel the men just talk about themselves, uh, intimacy may not have been created. Mm -hmm. you know, vulnerability may not have been created. So a man may just look for something to say and, and even ways to impress a woman on mm -hmm. first date. But it's not, there's no, de there's, there's no depth. Mm -hmm. It's just information. Yeah, but I think that a lot of those women that, that say that, many of them are women who either need a man to ask them questions so they can open up. They don't just share, right? There's, I mean, real conversation. You're not sitting here asking me questions. You're saying something. I'm thinking about, I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm responding, but we're having a dialogue and there's not questions being asked. We're just bouncing mm -hmm. off of each other, mm -hmm. right? We're sharing ideas and we're, you know, we're, 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 like it's like a handball or ping pong or something. I don't know, but it's like a game where you toss the ball back and forth, but we don't have to ask each other questions to have a wonderful, beautiful, deep, rich conversation. We, that was like our first date. You know, we, we just, it started out um, with this level of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I think you only asked one question that kind of short circuited. <laughs> I remember that question well, <laughs> but we didn't. And I think that what, I, what I'm really getting here is that <clears throat> one very wonderful missed opportunity for getting a man to open up is this insatiable, excuse me, insatiable curiosity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you do that and you're genuinely curious and it can be something as simple as um, a guy tells you he likes to go fly fishing. The first thought in my mind, if a guy says fly fishing, I'm like, what? <laughs> you like to go and do what? But if I were on a date, I would sort of take the position of, wow, well, this man loves fly fishing. And it's something that's incredibly important to him. Why don't I learn a little bit about fly fishing? <laughs> Plus, if you get someone into their passion. Yeah. If someone is passionate about whether it's fly fishing, whether it's watching college sports on the weekend, or, or you know, climbing mountains, you know, if it's their passion and you get them into their passion, the passion um, surplants excuse me, any anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, and just, you know, really get someone pumped and, and, and the conversation is, is alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'm curious just from people who, you know, the audience and people who are listening, I'm very curious to know what you're all gleaning from what we're saying. Are there insights? Are there some, you know, aha moments that you're experiencing as you're hearing Benjamin and me talk about this? Because I know I'm, I mean, I live with this man and I teach this stuff and I'm learning some things here. Like, if I were to go out and date right now, if I had to go, you know, go out and, and go on a date, I would take this information and I would sit across from that guy and I, I would practice on every single date or, or even with my partner, if you're in a relationship, I would listen to this and I would go right out. And the first thing I do is put my idea ideas aside about why isn't he asking me questions and why is he talking all about himself and yet blah, 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 whatever. And I would go on a date and I would sit across from a guy and I would just be insatiably curious. Mm. I would sit there and I would be like, wow, you know, you have five daughters. <laughs> like, <laughs> Whoa, tell me about what it's like to be a father to five daughters, even if I knew I was never going to date this man again, because I don't want to deal with five daughters, I could care less, but I would go on a date and I would sit up, you know, I would sit across from that guy and I would say, wow, you know, tell me about being a father to five daughters. What is that like? You know, what is it like or what is it like to breed Bernie's mountain dogs or to show dogs or whatever it is that he's a, to, or to race sports cars. But I would sit there and get really curious. And by the end of that date, I would know a heck of a lot about racing sports cars. Right. And I, I think even more important that when the man leaves the date, whether it's a match or not, mm -hmm. he will remember that date. He will remember the yeah. woman. He'll remember that evening. He'll remember everything about it. Yeah. You know, um, because it was special. It was unique. It was something that, that his soul craves. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the two people may not be, you know, not everyone's meant to be uh, the guardian of each other's souls. But for that evening, it is a magical evening. Yeah. And... I have to say, there was something I was going to share with you, but it, they, those thoughts, they come and they go, <laughs> they go and they go. <laughs> oh, I know what it was. One of the most attractive qualities I noticed about, you know, I've been doing this a long, long time. And one of the most attractive qualities I've seen that a woman can have, and this is so appealing to men, men love women who are willing to, to join in their hobbies, mm -hmm. their passions. And I knew a couple, I, I have known a few women over the years who they said in their profiles, their online dating profiles, and I would love, if you have passions, if you have pastimes, uh -huh. I would love to join you. Yeah. I'm, I'm open. If you, you know, if you play golf, I would love to learn how to play golf, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, that you love to do. I would be more than happy to join you in that. Yeah. The first date is a projection of what the future would look like with each other. Mm -hmm. And if someone is playful, they can project that it's going to be fun with this woman. Yeah. It's going to be spontaneous. Um, it's going to be, you know, um, it's not going to be dull. And if someone is interested in joining in on their, their passion, their hobbies, whatever it is, um, that they can just project saying, oh, my gosh, not only do I have a beautiful partner, uh, someone who listens, someone who's curious, but someone who will be not only my lover, and best friend, but also my playmate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's really brilliant. It's really important. And I will say your guy may go along with some of the things that you want to do, but it's way less likely that a man is going to like, go. yeah, let's go see the latest chick flick, uh -huh. you know, 
Whereas you may say, sure, you want to go see the latest action hero mm. movie? Let's let's do it. So men are going to be a little less likely to want to go along with the things that we want to do. Understandably, if a woman says, um, do you want to go quilting with me? <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, want to go quilting. I love it. Let's see here. We have a few people that wrote some comments. I feel it is more about finding common ground in the early dates, being able to have a conversation and <clears throat> Carrie's is a good step. I unknowingly used this strategy when I asked my boyfriend almost two years now why he chose to be an ESC teacher instead of a subject matter or else. That's great, Jenny. Mm. That's really, really wonderful. Anna said, isn't that being fake, especially since you already know you don't want to be with a man that has five kids? Anna, it's not being fake at all. I can still be interested in learning about what you know, what it's like to be a father of five. I mean, I, st I would actually be very curious to know that that wouldn't be fake at all. I would be, I mean, I wouldn't want to be date a guy that had five daughters <clears throat> or five kids, but I could be genuinely curious about what that's like for him. Yeah. It, it doesn't preclude having a magical evening, you know, having two people, Two strangers, which is mm -hmm. really what it is. Yeah. Two strangers meeting for whatever it is, a half hour, an hour and a half, whatever it is, and having that magical meeting and then going their separate ways. One would do that at a special workshop. Um, you know, uh, there are times in the life where there are meaningful interactions and you may never see that person again. Yeah, but it's, whoops. One would do that at a special workshop. Yeah, it wouldn't be disingenuous at all. I think it would be really lovely. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see who else has written some comments. It's that light mood that lights the room. Playfulness, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's hard oh, to hear you. Okay, babe. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> speak up. We have some good Benjamins. Please uh, speak up. Uh, um, I used. I just lived this. He asked nothing. I sensed he was nervous, but at the end of our date, he proclaimed. Wow, you just keep checking off all the boxes. This topic hit home. It was good to friend zone. I was going to friend zone him. I sensed him masking his vulnerability, second chance. That's fabulous. Yeah, I love that, Barry. Go for it. You know, you never know. You really don't. I've practiced this on dates. It is so wonderful to see a man get excited and have permission to keep sharing mm -hmm. about his interests and passions, Juliana says, you can see the glimmer in his eyes. Yeah, you really can. It's magical, just magical yeah. to watch a man light, mm -hmm. light up like that yeah. and open up because they don't do this with their friends. No guy is going to look at another guy and go, wow, you really sound like that. So passionate about this. Tell me more about why you love whatever that thing is. <laughs> It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. But with a woman, it would happen. It would happen. Um, then let's do our third one, babe. Well, the third one is something I learned. Um, I had published four books. And the very first book called Healers on Healing, one of the very first interviews I did was with Norman Cousins, who wrote the book Anatomy of an Illness, where he sought recovery from a debilitating disease and progressive disease of the spine with humor. And, uh, and you know, he's just this brilliant, brilliant man. I walked into his office and, you know, the front office and uh, at UCLA. And if you could imagine a snow globe, there were two secretaries there, assistants, and papers were flying, you know, phones were ringing, papers were flying. It was a mess. And I'm wondering, how am I going to do an interview in this environment? And I'm ushered back to his office, which is behind the front office. And what, the moment we made eye contact, I felt that there was a bell jar over me and, and him, and nothing else existed, you know, and... 
I don't even remember. Fortunately, I recorded the, the interview. And I don't remember what was said. I just remember, I profoundly remember um, how I felt. And to this day, and it's been 30 years later, more than 30 years later for that first book. And how rarely in our lives do we feel like in an interaction, there's a bell jar over the two people and nothing else exists. So whatever was going on in the front office with the papers flying, whatever was going on in his day, um, whatever we, you know, may have been following our interview, none of that existed. It was just the two of us. And there was such intimacy in the best sense of the word intimacy. You know, and it's something I'll never forget. Yeah. yeah. So this is a technique that we teach in my course, my my 12-week emotionally naked dating course for helping women find true love or what we call a guardian of your soul for the rest of your life. And it's a, it's a beautiful technique. In fact, it some of the women have turned it into a verb uh -huh. they'll come back from you know from a date or for, you know from having uh gotten on some zoom calls with a guy and they'll say wow i was bell jarring him the whole night and it was powerful and he was bell jarring me back <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know <laughs> but it's really magical benjamin did this on our first date and i could feel it it was palpable it was real it was, I could feel that we were sitting in the middle of the restaurant, but we were closed off from everything and everyone around us. And Benjamin was there giving me his full and undivided attention. And literally he was like this. And he was just so present with me. And if the waitress came up, he would like nod and acknowledge that he was breaking the connection. And then he would look up at the waitress and give her his full attention. And then he would come back to me and he was right there with me again. And it just, I could feel it. And so a little while later, some dates later, I said, what were you doing? What is the thing that you do? And he told me the story about Norman Cousins, yeah. was that, mm -hmm. and, and the bell jar. And it was magical. So our clients go out and they do this and they come back and they're like, whoa, that is powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you feel that somebody ha is really giving you their full attention and you're really there, normally when we're on a date, we're just, you know, we're distracted. We're not really present. And if you've ever been around or been with people who really are in the moment when they're very conscious, not self-conscious, but conscious of this person sitting in front of them, they're in control of the space, right? They're, they're, they're truly present. It's the most extraordinary experience. It's like sitting in front of a guru or a, you know, I, I don't know how to... You know. Well, the idea isn't to sit in front of a guru, but to sit in front of an equal partner, but someone who is deeply interested in not only you, but but the entire event, you know, that that it's, 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 it's an important event enough to, to create this intimacy or whether it's 20 minutes or two hours. And, and again, it may not be a match, but neither person will forget that evening. But there's also not an inner dialogue, like the person sitting, you know, there's not an inner dialogue like, oh God, I could be home doing my laundry mm, right. or watching the net, you know, the last episode of hacks or something. Mm, shampooing the couch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> organizing my sock drawer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that takes us out of the moment, you know, and we often do that when we're sitting on a date, you're sitting across from the other person. You're not in that bell jar. You're not present. You know, you're thinking about all the things you need to do, 
all the things you should be doing, the report that you need to get done for work. And there's a sense, there's something magical about the art of presence, being in the moment under that bell jar, truly not in the past, not thinking about the future, what you need to get done, but right there in that fully present in that moment with that other person. Yeah. And I, I think one of the best examples of a bell jar would be a mother and a, an infant, a baby that nothing for that mother and for that child, nothing else exists. And you can imagine the lack of connection if the mother was checking her phone, you know, uh, going on social media, there'd be no connection, you know, even in her mind, if, if she were thinking about something else, the baby would know it and mm -hmm. there wouldn't be that, that intimate connection. Yeah. Yep. So let's go over them, babe. What, what was the first one? The first one was, um, <laughs> what was the first one? If anybody remembers, write it in the chat. <laughs> well, what was the first one? Honey? Well, we'll go to the second one. <laughs> <laughs> what was the second one? Which is being insatiably curious. No, being playful. Oh, and being playful, but in being insatiably curious mm -hmm. and being playful. Mm -hmm. And then the third um, was the bell jar. The bear, bell jar. Mm -hmm. But the first one was creating vulnerability. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the first one is, is, you know, in the context of trust and safety to <clears throat> offer a vulnerable statement or, or sharing. And, and hopefully, you know, it's something about the present moment, how we feel, because that's more vulnerable than saying something historical. Um, uh, so that you know, we, we wait to see how it's received and how it's reciprocated. And then we can go one layer deeper and mm -hmm. then one layer deeper and so on. Yeah. And let's open it up, babe, for questions. Does anyone have any questions about this, about how to connect and get a man to open up to you on a date or, or just any general dating questions? Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much, honey. Um, any other questions? Anything that you all want to ask us about your dating life, how to create a deeper connection, a specific person that you're dating, or some, you know, a relationship-related issue, any of those things? Anybody have any questions? We have a few minutes left, and we'd be happy to answer them. Or any questions for Benjamin? Hmm. <laughs> Anna said, I like the simple way of opening up by saying I changed three times to get this right. <laughs> uh, that's very vulnerable and also humorous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I was going to wear the, the, the multicolored polka dot blouse, and then I thought I'd wear the white silk one, but I thought that was a little too suggestive, so I thought I'd go. I'd save that for the second day. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want you to get the wrong impression. <laughs> On the first date. <laughs> yeah. So I decided to go a little sporty. <laughs> Jeans and a t-shirt. <laughs> any questions? Anybody have any questions about dating, about men, about how to get a man to open up? anything. We're here for you. So if you have any questions, it doesn't have to be on this topic. It could be about anything that's going on in your dating life. Any good books on fear of commitment? Yes. One of my, one of my nails, my press on nails popped off in the middle of the date. Vulnerable. <laughs> Very. Um, books on fear of commitment. One book I always recommend to everybody is the book Charlene Attached. So Attached is by Amir Levine and it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. Um, I don't know that there's a better book out there. There's another book called Men Who Can't Love, which is a wonderful study on, of um, what it's like like really getting into the mind and the patterns of uh, 
commitment phobic men, men who have avoidant attachment disorder. Um, there's a book, a subsequent book that they wrote called He's Scared, She's Scared. I can put these in the chat. He's Scared, um, She's Scared, same author. Um, so He's Scared, She's Scared. And then there is, uh, um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Um, men who can't love. And there's something called, these are, do you, Charlene, are you saying that you have fear of commitment? You should read He's Scared, She's Scared and, and Attached. Both of those books um, would work for women. So if you're the one who has a fear of commitment, both of those are excellent. Excellent. Um, there's another book that has nothing to do that isn't specifically about fear of commitment, but there is a great book um, that's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And this is like one of the classic, classic self-help books. Classic. And it's really, really, really good. It's about getting past your fear, but it's not specifically about fear in relationships. So any other questions about anything? We've got just a few more minutes here. We'd love to, uh, this is your chance to ask us anything. We open this up and we're really open to anything you want to ask us about dating, about men, about love, about what to cook tonight for dinner, <laughs> anything at all. Anybody have any questions? If not, we're going to, we're going to sayonara and go enjoy the rest of our evening together. Anybody, come on, y'all. You've got lots and lots of dating experiences. Who's not dating? If you're not dating, what's, what's stopping you? What are you afraid of? Anybody really struggling out there and afraid to get out and date because you don't know how to get started or because you had a hard time? Anyone? <laughs> All right. Well, this is not, see, we talked about being insatiably curious. <laughs> this is your chance. <laughs> this is your chance. You can ask us about, uh, no, Anna. Don't tell, well, we're going to talk, you and me. So um, I look forward to speaking and hearing more about what happened. Um, yeah, that's a shame. I'm sorry to hear that. I know you were really fond of him. Anybody else? Any questions? Anything? Any dating resistance? Anybody dating up a storm and having a really great time with it? Anybody out there who just met somebody and is really happy? <laughs> all right everybody well we are gonna say good night we wish you all the best thank you so much for coming on tonight we look forward to or i look forward to seeing you next week honey thank you for joining me we thank can you. edit photos after this and, and oh yes please join us every sunday on sunday at 10 a.m mountain time we do an amazing, amazing Facebook Live, and it is called Getting Inside the Right, see, the right male, oops, male mind. Um, and this is a Facebook Live. So please, please, please join us. This week's topic is I will tell you what this week's topic is dating from this is going to be great a male perspective so we're going to talk about um what it's like for men to date what they go through what their challenges are what their fears are what their blocks are right because we look at how hard it is for us, but often we don't stop to think about what it's like for a man. So that will be our topic for Sunday. Please, please come and join us and tell your male friends because they will get as much out of this 
as you will. So tell your male friends and let's get the word out because this is a really, really, really exceptional, unique Facebook Live. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Lots of love to you all. Good to see everybody. Anna, I'm looking forward to speaking with you and we will see you next week. I also do a Facebook Live every Monday at noon Mountain Time to 1230. So please join me for all three Facebook Lives. Love to all of you. Bye-bye.